Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of another promise of shaitan. Shaitan says, I will definitely lead them astray. I'm going to show you. He is promising the creator. I'm going to lead them astray. And I will arouse their desires to do bad. I will arouse their desires. When something is prohibited for them, I'll show you how I'll beautify it for them. And when something is allowed or something is a command for them, I'll show you how I make them lazy for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And I shall instruct them. The devil says, you watch, the instruction won't be yours, it will be mine. You watch and see, I will show them and I will command them to slip the ears of the cattle, meaning to be cruel to the animals also, as well as to change the creation of yours, Ya Allah. What that means is they won't be happy with what you've given them. They won't want it. You know, this is why in Islam, there are certain things prohibited. A man has a face. Be happy with that face. A female has a face. Be happy with what Allah has granted you, where your nose is, your eyes and so on. If you are not happy with what Allah has given you, Wallahi, that's a disaster. That is ungratefulness, ingratitude. Why do you compete with the others? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So then a person has plastic surgery and what have you, all that will result in regret. Obviously, if someone's face is completely deformed after having been involved in an accident, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. There is a chance and a possibility that that particular individual may be going through some form of surgery in order to rectify what was wrong. But it is not allowed to go out and beautify yourself through various types of surgery and what have you. And this is why the hair that Allah has given us, we must be happy with it. It is prohibited for men and women to add extensions to their hair, which does not belong to them. These extensions that are sewn onto the hair is equivalent to telling the creator, I'm not happy with what you gave me. I'll show you I can come up with something better. Allahu Akbar. What a dangerous statement. We want to add to what Allah has given us. Allah gave us hair. So what if it's very little? So what if you are bald? What's wrong? I think it's actually quite good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. It's not a bad thing. Remember, one man's meat is another man's poison. Maybe that's not the correct saying here. But what is, what is meant is that what someone doesn't like, someone else will like. If you are big in size, don't worry. Remember the story of the king? Don't get too worried. Allahu Akbar. It is a duty of us. That we realize some people will admire you as you are. Allah has created people to like you with a dark complexion or with a light complexion. It's got nothing to do with what Allah has given you to say, I'm not happy with it. Alhamdulillah, be thankful. Because shaitan's plan, one of his plans, and we need to know his plan, is to make us ungrateful for what we've been given by the creator himself. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. Then Allah says, so don't follow the paths of shaitan. Shaitan has many paths. Allah has one path. As-siratul mustaqim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has one path. And shaitan has many paths. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la tattabi'u khutuwati shaitan. O you who believe, do not follow the paths of shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the same thing in Surah Al-Baqarah. Don't follow the paths of shaitan or the footsteps of shaitan rather. Because indeed, he is an outright clear open enemy of yours. We have told you what he did. Now you'd better take heed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all protection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nur, Whoever follows the paths or the footsteps of shaitan, there is a sign to actually pick them up. They are those who promote immorality, who promote indecency, who promote evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
must definitely make us from those who can recognize the evil and who can stay away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who follow the footsteps of shaitan, they are the ones who promote immorality, promiscuity and evil. They promote adultery, they promote all sorts of sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. In fact, in another verse in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ If you fulfill your salah correctly, automatically it will keep you away from immorality and evil. The same thing that shaitan instructs and commands. So if we would like to come out of the clutches of shaitan, we need to fulfill our salah. We need to engage in our prayer. The five daily prayers, plug in with your own creator and you will see how close you become to him. It will make you conscious of yourself and your deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks about how shaitan promises he promises the people and he makes them look forward to evil. He gives them all sorts of promises and he beautifies all the evil lusts and desires of the individual promising them, don't worry, Allah is forgiving. Allah will forgive you. Relax, don't even worry. Go and commit the sin. No, no, no. It's very beautiful. It's looking in front of you. It's in front of your eyes. No one's going to know about it. All that is shaitan's plan. Once you commit the sin, what shaitan does, he runs away. He quickly goes away. Because now you are in the shackles of his. You've already gone forward. Now you're worried. Who's seen me? What happened? You look behind you. You don't have any peace. When you're sleeping, your phone rings. You quickly run to it. You want this because of the sin you committed. May Allah protect us all. So a person actually gets caught in the tangle and gets caught in the shackles of shaitan because of the sins that shaitan promotes, then he runs away. And we will come to that later on in tonight's topic. How shaitan runs away. He is a very, very big deceiver. And do you know what he says? He actually comes out and swears an oath to say, I am genuine. Really, I've got a solid feeling for you. And sometimes this devil comes in the form of your best friend. May Allah protect us. Sometimes the devil comes using the mouth of really someone who's very close to you. Shaitan is very sharp. He's very intelligent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he sees you from a place where you don't see him. Amazing. Listen to the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-A'raf that shaitan sees you from a place you do not see him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, Him and His whole army, they watch you from a place that you cannot see them. So they come to you in disguise. They were kicked out of heaven. They still happened to transgress by infiltrating in one way or another and getting to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam and conning him. May Allah protect us. Allahu Akbar. Something very important that we need to know. If a person has fallen prey to shaitan, the thing he needs to do very quickly is to admit his sin and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To admit that shaitan has got hold of me. Ya Allah, take me out of the clutches of shaitan. But not only the dua, we need to make a firm intention and we need to walk in the right direction. Leave the path, the paths of shaitan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all. So shaitan promises people and he swears to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ فَدَلَّاهُمَا بِغُرُورِ he swore and he really took these people telling them, Adam and Hawa alayhim as salam, that do you know what? I promise you, I am genuine. This tree that Allah told you not to eat from, He only told you not to eat from it because if you eat it, you live forever. Allahu Akbar. If you eat it, you live forever. And if you eat from it, you will have kingdom and wealth that will never diminish. It will never ever be extinguished. It will never finish. So naturally, if someone told you, look, come here, I'll show you how to live longer. People will go and listen. Subhanallah. If they tell you, drink this, and you, really it will improve your health. Because 
it will give you so many more years. The first part of their statement might be correct. You have green tea, for example, it might be more healthy than the normal milk tea. That seems to be said. But it's not going to increase your life, not at all. It might enhance the quality of your life by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it will never give you one minute more. So if anyone thinks that it's going to prolong their lives, they are wrong. It's Allah who's decided your life is going to end there. And this is why to go to the devils is absolutely unacceptable. One of the items which shaitan encourages and promotes and teaches is black magic. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.